Hello and welcome to VTU e Sectional Learning Platform. In this video, we will going to discuss regarding medium excess control techniques. These techniques are mainly developed to solve the problem of coordinated excess of shared link. Under this category, we will going to discuss three categories of algorithms, random access technique algorithms or protocols, controlled access protocols and channelization protocols. Again these random access is subcategorized into ALOHA, CSMA CD and CSMA CA, whereas controlled access are grouped into a three categories that is reservation, polling and token passing. Whereas channelization protocols are classified as FDMA, TDMA and CDMA. In this video, we will going to discuss different algorithms of random access techniques. So, in this video, we will going to concentrate on ALOHA and CSMA CD. Random access techniques are the one in which no station has given any kind of a priority. All stations are equally treated. So, no station is superior to another. Whenever a station has something to send, especially these techniques are discussed in connection with data link layer, we will use the term frame for data. So, whenever a some station is in uh, say ready with the frame, it uses the some procedures which are defined by the protocol to verify the state of the medium. Based on the status of the medium, it makes the decision of sending the data or retrieve from the transmission. Now, Basically, the state of the medium here indicates whether the medium is busy or free or sometimes we call it as idle state of the medium. Now, first we will talk regarding the ALOHA. So, this ALOHA is grouped into a two categories. One is pure, pure ALOHA. The second category is slotted ALOHA. So, actually this ALOHA is developed in 1970 by University of Hawaii. This was designed for wireless LANs, but later it started getting used in shared medium, especially in a propagated mediums. When multiple mediums sh share the common link or a broadcast link, so naturally there will be a possibility that multiple stations which wants to transmit simultaneously or if they attempt to transmit simultaneously, then there will be a collision of frames which are transmitted by those stations which leads to a say disruption of which leads to a uh, say loss of data. Now, especially ALOHA. Whenever some station is ready for a sending of data, we call them call it as a sender and the receiver, one which receives this sent frame. Whenever it sends a frame, <coughs> the receiver replies to this received frame with an acknowledgement. The sender, once it gets an acknowledgement for the sent frame, it concludes that the frame has reached safely to the destination. So, to get an acknowledgement back from the receiver, sender will going to wait for 2 TP times, where TP indicates the propagation time. After waiting for 2 TP times, in case if it won't get an acknowledgement for the sent frame, <coughs> in that case, it concludes that frame is either lost or 
it got destroyed in a collision. So, when this type of a situation occurs, sender tries to resend that frame. Now, to avoid a further collision while it is resending the same frame immediately after it notices the collision, again it leads to a collision. To avoid this situation, this Aloha uses a back off procedure which helps to prevent the such say collisions. Now to understand how exactly this uh, uh, the reasons for collision and all, we will take this example in which we are talking of a system which is connected to a, a broadcast link uh, say S1, S2, S3, S4, these are the four systems which are connected to a broadcast, common broadcast link and they are working based on Aloha, pure Aloha. So, whenever they are ready with the frame, they put that into the medium, okay. So, now these are the different time intervals where these stations are throwing their frames into the medium. Now, Look at this situation where all the stations frames are getting overlapped which leads to the collision of the frames. That means this type of a situation is nothing but a collision situation where these frames gets collided and in the end the content of all these frames got lost. Now in this case these frames, these, these are the few frames which are sent by these stations will not reach the destination which in turn makes this station to resend these frames again by using back off procedure. Now to know regarding this back off, we will see how exactly it works. So initially to start with it sends a frame in the medium. As I said it waits for the, the station in which sends a frame waits for the 2 TP times. because 2 TP here indicates the round trip time, okay. So, it waits for 2 TP times. In case the acknowledgement it won't get back within this time, time period, it concludes that the frame is destroyed. So, what it will do is it will back off from transmission, okay. So, procedure for backing off from transmission is say based on selection of some random number r. Now, what is the space of say this random number? Now, it entirely depends on the number of attempts. To indicate the number of attempts, we are using a variable called as k, which tells the number of attempts that are made by the station. Initially, the k value is 0. Once it fails, once it fails to get an acknowledgement for the send frame, so k will going to be incremented by 1. So, based on this k value, the r value will going to be selected. Now, say for example, if k is 1, now r has a choice of selection of random number between 0, uh, either of these uh, two numbers either 0 or 1. So, it has two choice initially either 0 or 1. In case if it selects a 0, immediately it will make a next attempt. In case it waits, if it selects a 1, it waits for TB time, 1 into TB time. Fine. So, after waiting for say TB, TB here indicates the back off time. TB here indicates the back off time. So, it waits for TB time. After that, it will make a fresh attempt for transmission of frame. So, whenever it makes a fresh attempt again, in case if it fails in that attempt, so again k will going to be incremented. 
this process of k increment uh, uh, increasing of number of attempts will continue till k max is say less than k uh, k max is greater than k the moment the k value exceeds this k max then further attempt are not allowed for the station station is forced to abort the attempts now what exactly this k max is k max is equal to 15 okay in pure aloha we use 15 is the maximum attempts so after that station is forced to abort from the transmission so if number of attempts are greater than 15 till 15 it is allowed to continue if it is greater than 15 it will be forced to back off so this is how the aloha functions now to know regarding its possibility of collision time okay so we call it as the vulnerable time vulnerable time is the time during which there is a possibility of collision of packet when you look at the way in which this aloha functions so just refer this figure okay so station whenever it has a, a frame to send it throws that frame into this medium okay now up to what possibility okay so say till what time the medium has to be silent to get back an acknowledgement for the sent frame is 2 tfr time here tfr indicates a frame transmission time tfr here indicates a frame transmission time it is given by file size or a frame size divided by bandwidth it is given by frame size divided by bandwidth so this is known as frame transmission time so it is known as a frame transmission time so 2 into tfr okay or sometimes you can also take it as 2 tp time okay till 2 tp time or a 2 tfr time if no other station say involves in transmission except one okay then that frame will going to go through it reaches the destination successfully in case if anybody tries to send a frame within this period okay it leads to the collision it leads to the collision so the minimum time for which okay only one station except one station okay if other stations are not involved in transmission for a 2 tfr time then the transmission will going to be a, a successful one so this 2 tfr time we call it as vulnerable time as the name suggests the time during which there is a possibility of collision okay so we call it as vulnerable time so its value is 2 tfr okay now based on this vulnerable time we will discuss one example so i will read out the statement a pure aloha network which transmits 200 bits frames on a shared channel of 200 kbps what is the requirement to make a frame collision free so this particular example is based on vulnerable time now see what he is asking is say what is the requirement what is the requirement to make a frame collision free what exactly it means as it was discussed in the previous slide we said that 2 tfr is vulnerable time if no other stations involve in transmission during this time period except one station then the transmission is successful 
So this is what we need to find. So we have a data where the frame size is given which is equal to 200 bits which is equal to 200 bits. Then the channel bandwidth is given which is equal to 200 kbps okay kilobits per second. Then TFR frame transmission time is equal to 200 divided by 200 kbps that equal to 10 raised to 3 okay. Now after simplification it is 10 raised to minus 3 seconds or otherwise you can say 1 milliseconds okay. So the minimum requirement is what we want is if no station involved in transmission for 2 TFR times okay so that is 2 into 1 milliseconds that means 2 milliseconds period if no station is involved in transmission then we call it as the collision free or this is what is the minimum requirement that station expects from the system. So until 2 milliseconds time period if no other stations involved in transmission that station will going to transmit it successfully okay. So we will see one more example which is again an extension of the previous case. So where we will go to discuss regarding the throughput. So I will come back to this example in the later part. So first I will discuss regarding the throughput. So what exactly the throughput is in case of pure aloha. So the throughput of pure aloha yes here indicates the throughput is given by g into e raised to minus 2g okay e is exponent raised to minus 2g okay which is throughput. So in case of pure aloha this is what is the formula what we use to calculate the throughput of pure aloha. Now based on this formula okay we will try to find out then say throughput of the pure aloha for this particular situation where a station is involved for transmitting of frame of size 200 bits on a channel whose bandwidth is 200 kbps okay and that whole station uh, whole system okay system here indicates say which, which contains a multiple stations like ticks which are sharing the common medium which of all of them are using the common medium for transmission of data. So this is what is the situation where this particular set of uh, say stations they are producing 1000 frames per second. So that means all together all the stations in the system the number of stations are not mentioned here we will take the number of frames how many number of frames that are generated by all together by all those stations in 1 second. So this gives me a value of say in 1 second how many frames are generated by that station it is given that is 1000 frames and frame transmission time is mentioned that is 1 milliseconds. So when you know frame transmission time okay so if we see already we have calculated 200 divided by 200 kbps we have calculated previously so that is frame transmission time okay so which is equal to 1 milliseconds now we need to find how many packets are generated in 1 milliseconds time how many frames or a data or packets are generated in 1 milliseconds time the quantity given here is the number of frames that are generated in 1 second we need to know how many frames are generated in 1 milliseconds time that will help us to find whether uh, say what is an efficiency of pure aloha in this case okay. So we will see to it 
Now see, as it was told that frame one frame transmission time is one milliseconds. If the system creates, okay, one thousand frames per second, okay, so that means it is generating one frame per millisecond. This means g is equal to one. So in the formula, s is equal to e raised to minus two g, g into e raised to minus two g, where g is number of frames generated in one frame transmission time or otherwise in TFR. Okay. So, in one TFR, how many number of frames that are generated is that is g. So, that is the reason we are calculating the number of frames that are generated in one frame transmission time. It is 1. Okay. So, we know the value of g now. If I substitute these values in this equation, I will end up in getting a, this value that is 0 0.135. If I express it in percentage, multiply it by 100, it becomes 13.5 percent. Okay. So, the efficiency of pure aloha in this case is 13 percent. Now, we will see the maximum efficiency of pure aloha. What would, what, what would, what will be the maximum efficiency? Now, see we, whether it is 13.5 or anything more than that, okay. Now, see we know that vulnerable time is 2, 2 TFR. So, based on that, it is easy to find that g value, it is half frames, okay. Say in one TFR, if half frame is transmitted, that means for a two TFR times, there has to be only one frame. That means in one frame transmission time, it has to be half. So, two TFR time, only one frame has to be there to achieve the maximum efficiency. So, that means TFR is equal to one frame transmission time is equal to half. So, this is our g. Okay. So, this is our g. So, if I substitute this value in this formula, half e raised to minus 2 into half. Okay. So, this gives me a maximum efficiency that is 18.6 percent. The maximum efficiency of pure aloha is 18.6 percent. Okay. Now, we will talk regarding a slotted aloha, which is the, which is a slightly modified version of a pure aloha, in which we are changing the rule of pure aloha by a slight way. Say here we are saying that every station is allowed to send a frame at the beginning of new time slot. So, that means the time the the time of transmission is divided into a slots like this okay we are talking of dividing it into the form of slots we call, uh, say rather than writing it here i write it over here so so your time got divided in a slots like this every slot size is tfr it is tfr so total length of a slot is tfr now no station is allowed to transmit say as and when it is ready with the frame. Okay. It has to wait for the beginning of new time slot. So, stations are allowed to transmit only beginning of new time slot. Say for example, if station A is ready with the packet over here, frame over here, it is not allowed to transmit at this point. It has to wait for this time slot to start. So, then it is allowed to transmit. So, this is what is the rule that is adopted in the pure aloha. So, stations are allowed to transmit only at the beginning of new time slot. So, this leads to a reduction of vulnerable time. Say in a previous case, the
there was no discipline involved in a pure aloha stations were allowed to send at their will but by adding a small discipline to the whole system that means that stations are allowed to transmit only at the beginning of new time slot it has so much of improvement in the overall outcome so this 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 helps us to reduce the vulnerable time the vulnerable time got reduced by half that means in this case the vulnerable time is tfr it is just a tfr in a pure aloha it is 2 tfr whereas in this case it is tfr so the possibility of collision is over here now see naturally we say that slotted aloha whether there will be collisions or not yes there there also possibility of collisions because say for example station 2 is ready with a frame at this juncture at this point and even say frame 3 is now ready with a frame at this point both of them are now forced to send at the beginning of new time slot so this leads to a collision of these two frames now what changes we need to do over here in this flow chart okay so the flow chart or steps for slotted allow also remains same like the conditions other conditions also remain same that so send a frame only the change will be over here send a frame at the beginning of new time slot okay so rest all the procedures like backing off if a collision is noticed how the pure slotted aloha behaves okay it is same as that of pure aloha and it will also wait for an acknowledgement for 2 tp times okay rest all the rules will going to remain same except the sending of frame the frame will going to be sent at the beginning of new time slot only that addition the we need to add one extra word over here in this statement okay send a frame at the beginning of new time slot okay so if you add this additional word over here this whole flow chart will going to become say for a slotted aloha now we will also see one similar same example that what we have discussed in a previous case okay so that is a slotted aloha same example okay so if a system produces 1000 frames per second what will be an efficiency of slotted aloha we will see to it so these quantities that tfr what we have calculated it is 1 milliseconds and number of frames that are generated in one frame transmission time is 1 okay so in this case it is 1 so if you substitute in the throughput formula which is given by this one g into minus g rather than 2g it is minus g so if you substitute this g value 1 g is equal to 1 raised to minus 1 so it will give us a throughput that is 0 0.368 or this is equal to 36.8 percent so this is what is the efficiency of slotted aloha look at the small uh, say one small change in the pure aloha leads to a improvement so much of large improvement in the slotted aloha so this is all regarding slotted aloha
in the previous two algorithms, one thing we have noticed that both the algorithms does not adopt any procedure to sense the medium before transmitting. Okay. Now, to minimize these collisions, what we have seen in a pivot aloha and a slotted aloha, we will try to add this additional ability to the protocol or this additional ability to the station that it will be allowed to transmit after sensing the medium. Okay. So, this helps us to reduce the chance of collision. So, that is the reason we call it as CSMA method, the which is also known as carrier sense multiple access method. Okay. So, here the station will going to sense the medium before transmitting the data. Okay. So, he, in this case, we are adding an additional ability to the station that it should sense the medium before transmitting the data. Now, this carrier sensing ability which we, what we are adding to the say protocols, whether it will going to completely eliminate the collision or what? No. Still, the collision will occur in the shared medium even though if we add the ability of sensing the me medium before transmitting. So, if this is the case, what is the vulnerable time in case of CSMA CA? Now, to know regarding this vulnerable time of CSMA CA, we will consider this example in which I have uh, in uh, the system in which we have a four stations which are connected through a broadcast link. Okay. Now, as we said that each station will sense the medium before transmitting. Okay. What type of methodology they use for sensing the medium that we will see to, see to it later. Okay. Now, say for example, if A wants to transmit, what it will do? It will sense the medium. It will check the medium whether anybody is involved in transmission or not. Moment it notices that medium is free, it will start transmitting the frame. Okay. So, it will start sending the frame through the medium. Now, say at T1, A has sensed the medium, I will assume that medium is free. So, if medium is free, A is allowed to transmit, A starts transmitting. Now, in case, if I talk of B, if it senses the medium slightly below this time, which I will going to call it as T2, what will be the state of the medium for a B? It is still free because still this the signal one which is or the data one which is sent by the station A has not reached B. Okay. Say, the frames or the bits which are transmitted by these stations, frames which are in terms of bits which will be transmitted by these stations, which will propagate through the medium and it needs some finite time to reach these stations. Since the B is nearer to A, it will listen or it will come to know regarding this transmission bit early. But this time is greater than T2, uh, T1, it is greater than T1 this T2 is greater than T1, fine. Again, when it comes to the station C, which is physically far away from a station A, okay. So, it will going to sense the medium or it will come to know regarding the transmission of the data or a frame by A at T3, which is again greater than T2 as well as T1. When it comes to the station 4, which is far, far more station from the A, Okay. It will sense the medium, it will come to know regarding the transmission of A at T4, which is greater than T3. Okay. So, this is what is the situation shown over here. Now, the time from this point till this point, from the point of view of C, 
and from the point of view of B, this point to this point, and from the point of view of D, from this point to this point, okay, from this time till this time, still the medium is free, even though A has started its transmission, but to reach this, uh, the data that is transmitted by B, D, to reach D, it needs certain time. That time we call it as vulnerable time. So, this time we call it as propagation time. You see, this bit needs to travel from this point to this point. So, it has to travel this complete distance, this time, okay, we call it as propagation time. We call it as propagation time or TP, okay. So, the vulnerable time in case of CSMA is TP, okay. So, more or less it is same as that of TFR. But only additional ability that what we have added to the say CSMA is before transmission, the stations one which have adopted a CSMA will sense the medium and transmit and they go for a transmission of frames. Now, I was talking regarding sensing of medium. What are the different techniques that are used for sensing of medium? So, the techniques that are used for sensing of the medium is one persistent technique, a non persistent technique, say P persistent technique. What exactly the non one persistent technique means? Now, it is a kind of a technique in which the station one which wants to transmit the data, it senses the medium. Okay. In case if it notices busy, if a medium is busy, it will not keep quiet. It will keep on sensing the medium. It is a bit greedy kind of a pro protocol where it keeps on sensing the medium and moment it finds the medium is free. Now, look at this figure. So, this uh, blue uh, green colored uh, say bar which is shown over here which is indicating the busy status of the medium. Moment it station notices these arrow marks are say the arrow marks which are indicating a sensing activity of a some station for transmission. Okay. Moment it notices that station or medium is free, it jumps for a transmission. Immediately it starts transmitting. So, this we call it as one persistent transmission. Okay. Next is non persistent transmission. In this case, okay, that greediness we try to eliminate that was present in the persistent technique, which is not say that eager to send. It senses the medium. If medium it finds, if a station finds the medium is busy, okay, what it will do? It will wait, it will back off from transmission, wait for certain amount of time. Okay. Not immediately it will sense, it will wait. Okay. So, again after some time it senses the medium. Yes, in case if still finds it busy, again it will back off. So, this process continues till it finds the medium free. So, moment it finds the medium is free, it will not immediately involve in transmission. Main reason is because of this, main reason is because of this. It will wait, say wait for certain amount of time. It will wait again for certain amount of time before transmitting the data, fine. Say by using this policy, it will come to know if anybody else has already started the transmission or what, okay. So, it will wait for certain amount of time. After waiting for that period, in case if it does not get acknowledgement or any data, uh, if it does not see any data involved in transmission or uh, is there on the link, then it will go for transmission of its own frame, okay. It will wait. If it still finds the, uh, say after waiting for so much of period, if it finds the medium is free, it will jump for transmission. This technique we call it as non persistent technique. Next is P persistent technique. So, here it goes for transmission with a probability 1, whereas here it will back off, wait and go for transmission. Now, we will try to club these two properties that what we have seen in one persistent and non persistent technique. Then we call it as P persistent technique. Okay. So, it keeps on sensing the medium. This is same as that of 
say one persistent technique it continuously checking the medium status moment it finds the medium is free it will not jump for transmission it will wait for say time slot okay it will going to go for selection of some some time some time up to that time it will wait okay and again senses the medium before transmission okay so these are the uh, so in this case the station sends with a probability p p is less than 1 if p becomes 1 this also becomes a one persistent technique okay so very simple techniques so one of these techniques will going to be adopted in say csma so how exactly just now what i have explained it is represented in the form of flow chart now say the p persistent technique say it senses the medium continuously it keeps on sensing the medium which is same as this that of say one persistent technique okay so then if medium is free okay it generates a random number for waiting purpose okay so it generates some random number okay which is between 0 and 1 it will be a fraction also so then it waits okay if r is less than or equal to p it will go for selection of time slot okay then wait for that much of time then it will go for transmission of data yes so this is how csma works now one more ability that is missed in this csma okay so that is it is sensing the medium before transmitting but in case if collision occurs okay if if two frames gets collided so naturally when there is a issue of vulnerable time say comes into the picture there is a possibility of collision of frames if two frames gets collided how the stations will going to detect it till now we have not addressed that particular issue in all these three cases in csma in aloha in slotted aloha we never talked regarding how exactly station will come to know regarding the collision so simple technique that was used to identify whether there is a collision or not is using of acknowledgement but in this case okay so the next technique in which we will not going to make the stations to wait for a 2 tp times complete 2 tp times so in case if there is a collision okay station will going to come back get back come to know regarding okay collision so that means we are adding a one more additional ability to the protocol that is collision detection property okay so csma slash cd carrier sends multiple access with collision detection ability so this is an additional ability that we what we are adding to the csma protocol which helps us to solve the problem of say backing off from the transmission once the station notices the collision okay so regarding this csma We'll go to discuss it this in a detail in the next class. Thank you very much.